So now that we set up our game for when the game ends, it takes our score that we got and then displays it within our end game view. We're now ready to talk about, when we restart the game, our high score. Now, we can learn about how we can now display the high score and save it within our application. So every time our user returns to their app, again, it loads up their highest score they ever got, and then they're gonna try and beat it. Now, we're gonna be doing this in simply two stages. Before we learn about how we can display the high score, we first need to learn about how we can save the high score. And this is because when it comes to displaying the high score, we simply load that highest score, but if we beat it, we need to understand how we can then update that saved file. So before we do all that, we need to actually learn about how we can save simple pieces of text within our application. So within our game view controller.swift, we're simply going to set up the ability to, once the game ends, to save the current score that it has. Now remember, what we're doing in this lecture is going to be heavily adjusted for the next lecture when we come to learn about how we can update and change the high score file. Uh, we're just solely going to learn about saving the score. So as soon as the game timer invalidates and then switches to our, again, our end game view, just as it invalidates, we're going to set up a small little function now to save that score to our application, which is known as a key for our user defaults. So what we're gonna do then is create our constant of our let here. And we need to create a variable which is gonna hold the information that we want to save. For example, let's just call this our saved string. Now we're using strings because that is the format of the information that we want to save. And that's simply gonna equal our score label simply dot text. So that string is going to equal, again, the text within that label. We're then going to take that string and save it using user defaults or NS user defaults, whichever one you want to refer to it as, to a specific key file. So we create another let, and I simply call this our user defaults. And then we simply equal this to our foundation dot user defaults dot standard. So now we type in our user defaults of what we called up above here. Make sure you don't get it confused with the uppercase that it is a lowercase user here. Uh, then what we type in then is our dot set and we need the URL and for key. And in the URL section here, we can link this back to our saved string. And in the for key here, we do two quotation marks. This is gonna be the name of the file we're gonna be always saving our data to in terms of our high score. So just to keep this nice and easy and simple for you to understand, I'm just gonna simply call it uh, our key and end that with a bracket. Now, every time the game ends, it's gonna always save the score our user got to our key. Then we can reference our key anywhere within our application at any time. It can be today, next week, a year from now. Load up that key and it will display the information that we saved it to. So let's go back to our view controller.swift. And as soon as the view loads up here, we're going to set up the ability now to load up that high score or the score that we saved to our key. Now, the view did load only works as soon as the view appears. So maybe not using this will be the best option. Let's create a whole new function altogether down below. And this one is gonna be for our view will appear and add that in. So the view will appear function works very similar to the view did load. Whereas the view did load only calls upon actions as soon as the view loads up, the view will appear calls upon the actions every time the view appears. So what's the difference you may be thinking? It kind of feels like it's the same thing. Well, the view did load only triggers once in the whole of the application's time of it being open, where the view will appear can be triggered over and over again. We could switch to a new view, then switch back, and every time we switch back, the view will appear will be triggered. And what we want to do is basically very similar to what we just created. We want to get our user defaults, we'll simply call it, and we'll equal this to our foundation, uh, simply dot user defaults dot standard. And then we're going to create a additional let here, and we're going to call this our value. 
And this is going to equal our user default we created just up above with the lowercase u dot string for key. So we're now getting the key that we've been using and saving the data to. And if we can remember correctly, we called it key and that with a bracket. So now that let that we just created there of our value now stores and holds the information that we saved within the key. All that's left for us to do then is get the label that we want to then display uh, that information inside of it. And for us, that just happens to be what we created previously, our label to dot text to simply equal our string of our value. As simple as that. So let's go to build and run them. And once you build and run, we go through it, we'll explain it in greater detail of what we've just done. So let's quickly, as we wait for it to load up, jump into our game view controller dot swift. So you can see straight away, there is nothing being displayed within our high score label. And again, because that's nothing at all we have inside of the key because we haven't saved any data to it. So as far as we're concerned, that key is completely blank. But don't worry about that just yet. Again, when we come to our next lecture of learning and talking about how we can update the record, we could be completely changing how things work. So we go to start the game and we begin to play. So we get a score and what it returns out to be when the game ends is going to get our score label and then save that to our key we created. So once it ends, there we go. And then when we restart and the view loads up, it's now displaying the number seven within our high score. And you may be thinking that works very similar to how when we transfer the data from the game view to the end view. And yes, it is very similar. But the difference is, if I go up now to stop the application and build and run it again, you can see within the view did load, what it does is it gets our key and then equals our label to it. So I've built and run the application again as if our user closed it and then maybe a few days later wanted to play again, they open up the application and it displays that saved data. So you may be thinking, this works perfect. Yes and no. What we've now done is we've saved a score and now we're loading it up every time. What it doesn't do is if I now, again, go to play, if I got a score which is much lower, all it's simply doing at the moment is saving the data and then loads it up. That's all it simply does. So again, once it ends, restart, now it displays number four. That's all it does, which is perfect. We now know how to save the data. So all we need to do now is work up and kind of create a way that it only saves the data if the current score is higher than the previously saved data. Sounds a little bit confusing, but with the help of some simple if statements, it's very, very possible.